Hello, hello, hello. How has your Monday been? <laughs> if you're listening to this, of course it's Monday. As if you among the first people to be listening, it's definitely Monday. I hope it's coming along well. I hope you had a fabulous weekend. I hope the week coming ahead is going to be a prosperous and a lovely and a happy one because I wish you nothing but happiness all the time. And I hope this episode also makes it better. So I put out my last uh, prompt on Thursday for this podcast episode for season three. Please relax for season three. So we're going to take a short break and then there's some logistics I'm trying to put together and then we can come back for season four. And I'm really Really hopeful i'm really excited of course i'm scared but we'll talk about how this podcast began and where i'm choosing to head with it in uh, up towards the end of this episode but of course i did put out a prompt on thursday that asked you something and of course there are people who contributed because i mean I I am because you are. I mean, this this podcast would be nothing, nothing without you. And I love it like that. I love that we found a small, nice, intimate family that is so safe and lovely and happy. I love it, love it, love it here. So welcome to the season three finale episode of the In All Honesty podcast. My fabulous name is Oliver Rao. And last Thursday, I asked you, what is a character trait that you have that oddly works out for you? So I told you that I am very, very calm. And what I've noticed as I'm working in corporate is that being calm is something that they don't appreciate because a lot of times they like to read you so that they know how to manipulate you. So I've found myself in situations where people are not able to read me and therefore because they cannot read you, they just play safe and hand you a whatever you ask for or whatever you needed to be handed or whatever is rightfully yours. So it's played for me in the sense that it's worked out for me. And a lot of people ask me, how are you not outspoken yet things work out for you? Uh, they work out either way. I guess there's more than one way to kill a rat. You shouldn't... <laughs> yo, someone told me of a rat just the other week. I feel triggered. Hey, yo, no, I don't... <laughs> I've thought of a rat. <laughs> anyway, anyway, there's more than one way to kill a rat. But anyway, I'll get into the direct responses. In true fashion of the In All Honesty podcast, I asked you what is a character trait you have that you that oddly works out for you. And the first person here told me being a noisemaker and questioning everything made me a customer care agent. <laughs> I don't know. Do those two things relate? Must you be loud? And must you be loud to make it in customer care? I don't know, but or it could be because I've worked in customer care and I was exhausted. I, I, the, the minute I'd see humans, I'm just so like, why, why is this person here? I don't think I can do phone calls in my ear as well. So yeah, I guess it does work out being a noisemaker. And I've always admired people who are loud because I feel like things work out for them. The loudness does keep things moving. Yeah, it does. Uh, someone else says, looking like a clown to please the financially superior. Yo, yo, wait a minute because this is a hell of a superpower. There are people who have mastered the art of just being dumb. And because the people who hold the authority or rather hold the financial muscle or rather hold that thing that you require want to puppeteer you, you can just play that role and it doesn't bother you. Once you're out of there, you snap out. It's like a circus. You get into character and once you're out of that space, you just snap back into your whole... Man, this is a gold mine. This is a gold mine. And this is someone who can survive in corporate really, really well. Hey, kudos to you. Esh. <laughs> I'm really calm like you. This is another person who says... Um, said and people have like you said i'm really calm like you said and people have a hard time reading me when people have a hard time reading you i've, I've realized humans really want to read people and when they cannot it's hard for them to interact with you because humans need to judge you a certain way to know what to do with you and so when they cannot i don't know they just it, it's an uneasiness but for us it works out in the sense that in spaces where People cannot read you. They assume the worst and therefore they're able to just give you what you require or what you have asked for. Because at least people who speak out say exactly what they want. For people who do not speak out, 
you really don't know if they are going to burn that building down. You don't know if they are forgiving you in that moment. You don't know if they are going to forward your name to the pastor in church to pray for you. You don't know if they're going to give their grandmother your name and then soon you'll be growing a horn on your forehead. You do not know. So for that reason, do as you're told. <laughs> uh, someone else says cringiness. I don't know why you'd say cringiness. Um, why would someone be cringe? I'm trying to think of why someone would, how someone would be cringe. Uh, but it's something you have. I don't think it's a good word to describe yourself with. Find another word. Like I, I think someone said here, I clown for, for people who are in financial, who are financially superior. But cringe? Like if I just see you, you're cringe. Okay. Um, interesting. But I guess that's you and it works out for you. Someone else said Luo accent. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is the truth. You walk into a space with Luo accent. First of all, you're assumed to be loud. And second, you're assumed to know what you want. <laughs> and I swear to you, all you have to do is just switch up into that. You know, you're just supposed to come from what character trait do you have to, what character trait do you have? And it's over. It's over. You're getting entrance into that room quick, fast. In fact, you're getting a VIP seat. <laughs> I can understand how a Luo accent gets you through places because, first of all, it is assumed they're going to embarrass you. If you do not give me what I want or if you're trying to deny me my right, for one, I'm going to speak about it and the whole of this building is going to know what you've done. <laughs> uh, someone else says, having a bitchy and rude face has saved me from a lot, plus not smiling. Yo. As with the resting bitch face, people have thought we are mean and we've not done anything. But I can I can imagine being rude and being mean just keeps people who would want to use you away. And also it just makes you deal with the people who genuinely are, are willing to risk it to interact with you <laughs> so that they can get whatever they, they want. And usually it's people who are willing to break through that wall. And so you're dealing with like higher quality humans than if you're just open and a nice person and a good person, if you're always smiling and you're warm, yo, you will attract every single thing and it will just be difficult. But I feel you, being rude and looking mean, ah, beautiful. No one comes to you unless they, unless they have purposed that they need that thing that they, they require from you specifically. The other people who can offer it, then there's no one else who can offer it. They, they need it from you. So yeah, you deal with a higher quality of humans. I really understand that. Someone else said, saying interesting when, saying interesting when something that you don't resonate with is said. I love how the word is neutrally chaotic. <laughs> I've had such a problem I've had such a problem with a friend of mine because of such a thing. It's not interesting. They don't use the word interesting per se, but they can check out mentally, but continue to interact with someone who's going on and on about something that they don't really care for. When I feel like if there's a noise somewhere, it's 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 like a bee buzz. It's irritating to me. If I don't want to listen to you, I'd prefer if you don't speak. So I'll shut you down. But there are people who can check out mentally and continue with a conversation physically, which is wild to me. But it does work because then you can trick people into thinking that they, you are interested in whatever they you, you can trick people. That's the end goal. You can trick people. <laughs> And I think if you can trick people, then you can get away with a lot and you can get to the things that you want. So it's good. It's working out. And this is interesting because the next one is actually related. This person says manipulation as it should be. I can manipulate my way out of any situation without blinking. If there's people I fear is people who are manipulative. And some people don't even recognize that they are manipulative. They just are, but they do not realize it. I'd like to know where you pick up manipulation from, if it's something you picked up from a family member or you've acquired it over time in life and now it's working out for you. But I know if you're manipulative, you're going to get away with a lot, first of all, and then you're going to get your way in life. So I feel like probably manipulative people thrive better. I've seen manipulative people. I've worked. I feel like most of the 
good bosses I've worked with were sort of manipulative. And I think it's a very key aspect to have if you're looking to thrive probably and especially in the capitalist system. So I get it. But I think I'm 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 afraid of manipulative people when it comes to personal relationships. So I can imagine them dealing with family, friends and lovers. Yo, I don't know if I want to be your friend if you applied to all parts of your life. Yeah. Anyway, someone else says, being happy and smiling always. This is also something that I have, but I acquired it as an uh, overcompensation for having a bitch face and being thought to be a bitch. So um, in places where I have been, in like places where I have worked, I really hated the discomfort of being the new person. So I adopted being happy and always like being smiling and warm because I wanted if I'm old in a new in a in a place, I'd want the new people to feel warm. So I adapted that immediate. Like I'm happy and I'm I'm happy and smiling and warm all the time. It's just that if you find me not engaging in anything that would be putting me in that mood, I just look like a bitch. So I can understand how being happy and smiling is just a really nice thing. Usually people warm up to you very easily. Usually they find you very trusting. Usually people feel that your company is safe and it's a good thing. And it works out for you in the sense. Let me tell you, if there's one thing you'll always have is the tea. You will never look for it, but it will find you. When you're when you're a jolly happy person and you're warm and welcoming, my good, the tea will always find you. <laughs> and it's good because now, well, it doesn't help to be, it doesn't help if you now have tea because it could be used as ammo. But then I feel like I'm too decent a human to use any information I have about you against you. I just, I don't think I would ever do that. But yeah, there you go. Uh, someone else said, being mean, here we go, bitch faces, being mean, it really saves you from a lot of bullshit that gets people who are nice or to just anybody. Hey, yo, being mean is nice. And I feel like mean people get a lot out of life. And I, I used to hope, at some point I used to wish that I'd be mean, but also... I hope you're mean and like you can gauge it because sometimes I meet people and they're just mean to me and I've done nothing to them. We're not competing. We're just like, they're just mean. And usually I'm not able to process that because I'm just thinking, why are you mean for no reason? Like me, I'm kind for no reason. Why are you mean? Why would you, if kindness is free and meanness is free, why would you choose mean? <laughs> so I don't know where it applies in your life, but usually being mean helps you. You you don't deal you do not deal with a lot of bullshit even at places of work or even like your family members. People who know you, they just know oh this and this and this, but if I'm going to tell Olive, I'm not going to tell her this cuz uh, you uh, so you I think it's the same thing as the person I mentioned earlier, you deal with a higher quality of humans cuz not anyone is just going to approach you. Yeah, working out. Um, someone else says, being widely composed, being wildly composed, my life could be messy, but I never look like I am losing my mind. Ah. This is important because if there's one thing that people do not, people who don't want you to thrive, want to see is actual evidence of you breaking down. So if you can find safe places where you can be vulnerable, it's really good. And this is something that even women are told in corporate. Don't let them see that they've broken you down. You can't come into corporate spaces and cry about things. You can't because they already have a certain notion about women and they're just going to place you into a certain box that won't work out for you. So if you are good at composing yourself and I have this as well. I swear to you, there are things that have happened to me and I've left this house and met people and interacted with them and came back and locked my door and then just cried myself to sleep. Because I, for me, I'm trying to like be more open to people and like share and have other people who can hold my vulnerability for me. I want to develop trust with other humans. But for now, I usually feel like even what ticks the people, I have seen it 
genuinely what ticks people who do not want good for me is when they see me literally not breaking down like someone will literally want something bad to happen to you and if it does not happen to you you can see them literally mad and sometimes i'm really invested in making people mad i'm just like oh you want to see this oh then you will not so this this is really good i think it really is but again delicate balance you have to know where the trauma begins and where you're just protecting yourself but beautiful um someone else says radical approach to relationships eh, we need to learn this my close friends mean just as much as my lovers or my family but i choose well this is really beautiful do not change because this is something i've seen a lot of people preaching lately i think people in the psychology field are also telling everyone do not cluster yes you can cluster your family friends lovers da, da, but make sure that your standards are cutting across if you won't deal with a manipulative person you won't deal with a manipulative mother you won't deal with a manipulative husband you won't deal with a manipulative friend it does not matter so your standards should cut across and i think that's really beautiful being logical when you're approaching relationships and you're like if i won't accept this from this person i won't accept it across board i think that's lovely it works out for you really great i believe you have a very good quality of um a very good quality of humans around you like your circle is quality i truly believe that ha huh, the last person here says direct prompt cutthroat animal will eat you to survive but you won't see it coming yes you're definitely going to thrive in this world you're definitely going to be a billionaire with this kind of character trait you are going to be in the one percent of the richest people in the world because that is one thing that you need to be to be a billionaire so i believe that this is a character trait that will make you thrive but here's the thing i can never be your friend <laughs> i just cannot i don't know i don't know where trust will end i just do not trust myself to be your friend hey yo mm -mm, leave me out of it <laughs> <laughs> and to other short responses that i now got through my dm someone said being noticed despite not wanting attention so let me explain this because i told them i also struggle with this and not i don't struggle with it but i also get noticed a lot and uh, this person said oh it's because you create content no this is before i started creating content right from primary school high school campus i've taken up leadership roles that i did not actively seek for and campus you're like 1000 people and everyone is minding their business it's so chaotic for you to be actually singled out in such a space is huge so then i realized it didn't matter what i do i'm very easy to note and i do not know why because this person just say being noticed i don't know if they're the kind of people who dress up or clean up really well i have no idea maybe they're the kind of person even if they sit at the back probably the way they their composure the way they dress i don't know maybe it sort of will make them stand out um they haven't given me context so i already know if that's the case but for me i know i don't dress up I look like I am homeless throughout. In fact, if you find me dressed up, it's by luck. It's by luck you ever bumped into me dressed up. <laughs> I don't dress up. I do basic, I, the bare minimum. All I do is shower. I just shower and moisturize my skin. That's the most I do. I don't even buy clothes. I hate shopping. Let me tell you guys, this is a side note. If I stumble upon money, yo, wait, let money find me. You will not believe it. <laughs> i'm gonna get a makeup artist i'm gonna get a stylist i'm gonna get a hairdresser i'm gonna get some an errands person like literally someone to shop for me because me i cannot do that shit. we'll just wear old clothes i'm not here for for all that work <laughs> but anyway all that just to say i do nothing to stand out but if i'm in a space you most of the time i'm noted i don't know why i'm noted and a lot of times people think i look familiar i don't know where from but anyway, this is one thing that I think is, is not inbuilt. I'm looking for that word. Is it innate? Yes, it's innate. It's in you. I think it's the same thing as sex appeal. I have an episode on sex appeal. I think it's the same thing as sex appeal where you're just, 
It's an aura you have. I cannot explain it. I don't want to harness it because a lot of times when you tell someone, oh, I'm just like this, I just get noticed. They tell you, oh, you, you should find a way to harness. I don't want to harness it. I enjoy it as is. Once I start harnessing it, I think I'll be more aware of it. I think I'll use it to manipulate people. I don't want that. If it's a gift I've been given, let me just live with it. This is beautiful for you. Being noticed is such a good thing and it give, it puts you on the spotlight and therefore your strengths are easily highlighted than fighting with people to get to a spotlight. <laughs> beautiful. You'll be fine. This, this is going to work out for you so well. If it's worked out for me the way it has, I'm sure this has worked out for you so well, but we didn't speak in length, so I don't know what the context is. Uh, someone else says, me too. That jumping they expected me to do, I don't have it and I'm not it. It makes them mad. <laughs> These are calm people. This is, this is my calm family. They, you, you want to come and tell me that you've bought pizza for the office. What am I supposed to do? do? Jump up and down. Hmm? You come and say, oh, you've given me a pay rise. You're supposed to be giving me a pay rise. What am I supposed to do? Jump up and down. Yeah. You come and tell me some disappointing news or you address me rudely. You want me to react. I don't have it in me. This face will remain the same. I don't have the energy to change my facial expressions. <laughs> and yes, it does make a lot of people mad, especially in corporate. Yo. Mm. Someone else says, without lying, manipulation. And if I say manipulation, I mean it. I am not a violent person. I'm so calm that it even surprises me sometimes. I will rather manipulate, I will rather manipulate my way out of an argument than fight or argue back. I even manipulate myself into doing things sometimes I don't want to do or I'm lazy about doing. Let me tell you, this is manipulation on level 100. <laughs> Because I've heard of manipulation, but I hear people manipulating others. I've never heard someone manipulate themselves into doing something. This one is level 100. I don't think I have manipulation in me. I just don't know how it works. But I think I'm also very careful with people who are manipulative. And they know they are. It's scary. It's very scary. But being manipulative definitely works out for you in many things in life. And you also are very... I feel like manipulative people have, what is it called? They are long-sighted. They are, they are far-sighted. They don't plan for here. They've calculated, calculated, calculated. <laughs> They're like 10 steps ahead, which I think is a really key thing for you to like make it in life. But anyway, ah, it's a good one. Um, now longer ones, but these were still DMs. Hello, hello. My best character trait is that I am outspoken and you probably know this already because you know me in person. Yes, I do. Girl, I can talk. Talk myself out of bad situations, talk myself into very good deals and just talk. Talk. <laughs> I picked this trait from both my parents. My father was the loudest teacher I've ever seen and would double up as the MC, choir master and dance choreographer in any school fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's not doubling up no no no, no. <laughs> that's like tripling up or whatever that's not doubling up he's doing everything anyway my mother was the kind of housewife who was louder than the than all village women combined and i always tried to be uh, and always tried to be the head of something be it maendeleo ya wanawake chama singing group or even in church she had to grab a position and let me tell you maina when my mother was in charge everybody had to know she was the head and not the tail <laughs> then they both came together and sired me the loudest combination of both of them ah this is lovely let me tell you if there's something i love loud people for they will always get their way Loud people speak for themselves. It's loud people who get into activism. It's loud people who give us the spaces that we have right now. I honestly have so much respect for loud people. You will not bully them. You will know that their presence is there. Loud people are the best. I know all my life I've always wanted to be a loud person because I feel like even I'd be respected more. I don't, loud people, they don't get bullshit. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yes, I do know her in person and she's such a lovely soul. I haven't met her on the negative side. 
I've met her on like she's very warm and bubbly and it's even loud people who make you feel at home when you're in a new place. If you go into a new place and then you just find quiet people like me, you'll feel so out of place. <laughs> so yes, we, we are grateful for loud people. We are always grateful for loud people. Another long one says here, hello there. Your intro gave me welcome to this. <laughs> I can watch with you people. You people are mad disrespectful and I can <laughs> I cannot <laughs> So this was the prompt that I put up. So for my intro I was doing the welcome adjudicators, whatever we used to do in primary school. But anyway, eh yo anyway. Anyways, back to the topic of the day. While I was growing up, my mom has always been the one providing for us, even though my dad was there. My dad's job, as he believed, was to pay school fees and that was all. Everything else from clothing to food to house, rent to school trips was all on my mom. Seeing how independent my mom was, I slowly picked it up to a point where I didn't even want to ask my dad or my brothers for small things such as pens. I would look for ways to earn money to get myself a pen or exercise books. I learned not to expect anything from anyone. Let me tell you, today you can tell me usinunue chumvi nitakuja nayo and I still will buy. I'd rather have two packets than be disappointed. It has saved me from a lot of disappointments. Please tell us when uh, when is season four starting and what will we be doing? Meanwhile, Nabado Sija recover from the stay at home don't. <laughs> <laughs> stay at home daughter was from last week eh, eh, you people make me laugh there was someone who's just like things are not working out in my life maybe it is the universe's uh the universe trying to tell me that you 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 are a stay at home daughter <laughs> but anyway season four is gonna come we're going on a break during this period i i, I, I try, i'll try and give you music content I will definitely give you reviews like um, equipment reviews, any equipment that I have. I'm definitely going to put that, that up on YouTube. And of course, I've said on socials, definitely. I'll always be active there. If you're following me on any of those, you should be fine. You should still see me around. I should share nuggets of wisdom here and there. We can still interact until season four is set and we are back. But with that said, hey hyper independence when i replied to you i told you that this is hyper independence and we actually have an entire episode of hyper independence we do right it could be season two and if it's not it's on season three actually we had a whole episode of hyper independence and i've always said that this is of course a trauma response but not all trauma responses are bad you just have to strike a balance where you're still protecting yourself while still not being too isolated and I think I, I'm not even the right person to give an opinion on this because I am extremely hyper independent. And I remember there's this one time when I was living with my ex and I'd sent him for a couple of things and he never brought them. And at the time I was trying to train myself to trust other people, like just be calm. It's okay. Trust other people. And I think the last stroke was when I just brought him. Um, the last stroke was when I asked him, I had, I was already all home and I asked him, please, when you come, come with milk. And I told myself, I, I I remember holding myself back and I was just like, Olive, don't be a control freak. Don't go to the shop and get yourself milk. Just trust that he will come with milk. And just like the previous probably three, four times, this guy showed up without milk. I was just like, you know what? <laughs> I fuck this shit. I'm taking the walls back up. So for me, I think it really helps, especially with disappointment, handling disappointment, and also just not being over-reliant on people because not even being over-reliant. Like for my ex, I was just like, I am the most reliable person you'll ever have in this life. Honestly, if I'm in your life, I am extremely reliable. And that's all I ask of other people. And people just never come through and I'm just, <sighs> it's tiresome. So if you got to be hyper independent, be hyper independent, protect yourself. But I think you'll also have, like, like I've mentioned for other traumas, you'll also have to strike a balance because it gets to a point where it's just like lack of trust from anyone. Like you're not... You're not trusting anyone. You're not letting anyone do anything. You're the one who's in control all the time and you'll get a burnout. So be very careful on just striking a balance. Everything is balanced. But for hyper independence, you're good because... 
for as long as you can be there for yourself, be there for yourself, be yourself, be that person to yourself first before relying on other people. But yeah, uh, that works out for you in many ways, very many ways, because you don't have to deal with that. Me, I remember me, I know in situations where I'm just like, I, I'll send someone, but I'll still go for it myself. That person always, always comes with the wrong thing. If at all, they've not forgotten. If, if they've not forgotten, they've come with the wrong <sighs> humans. You're not to be trusted. Or maybe it's just me who's not meeting other reliable people. I, if I exist, there's someone else out there who exists like me. Why am I, why am I not meeting them? Hmm? Okay. Another, now this is male. We got male and I got three. And I'm finishing with the other two, which are very long because I feel like they're really good, like... They're giving the energy of why this podcast exists. And that's why I want to finish with those. So this one says, this is the first one, which is a slightly short. Hello, Olive. I hope it's not too late to send in a response to your weekly prompt. No, it's not. So long as it's not Sunday, you're still early. <laughs> Um, some of the character traits that have been beneficial to be to me have been being introverted, being a late bloomer and being resolute. I used to think that they um, that they were detrimental when I was younger, but as an adult, I'm highly appreciative of them. I am my own person, able to introspect, comfortable in my own skin, my own company, pace of life, and unperturbed by outside noises. Where, if you can hear that dog, please forgive me. I don't know who's trying to steal from my neighbor. I've always had a small circle and was surprised to discover most people have shrinking circles as they age. I've always been picky with the people I let into my life and now I realize it's for the best. Being a late bloomer has protected me from a lot of things whose consequences would have been dire had I experienced them at a younger age. My resolution has, all, has allowed me to stand by my beliefs despite them being controversial, for example, being child-free and demisexual without feeling the need to explain myself to people. Overall, I've been saved the trauma of, of wanting to fit in and, peop and people please, for which I am grateful as many struggle with it. I don't have everything figured out and my life isn't perfect, but I am doing it on my own terms and the world will adjust. Congratulations on the conclusion of another wonderful season. I'm an avid listener and, a re and I and resonate with a lot of the discussions. Ha! Ah, signed. I don't know if you want your name to be signed here, to be said here, but ah, this is so wholesome. First of all, thank you for your very kind words. And uh, second, being a late bloomer, I can totally relate. I didn't know anything until I was like later on in life. But at some point, I still regret it. I feel like I should have been more exposed to especially things especially the world as is i feel like a lot of what i lived in was make believe and when i finally interacted with the real world i was just like this is how humans behave this is where but honestly it does save you a lot it does save you a lot and as i've said before being content with what you have i've always said I've, I, I've, I've had instances where I'm feeling like I'm lagging behind, da, da, da. I'm feeling jealous of someone else, da, da, da. but at the end of the day, I've always been very content with what I have. At any particular point where I felt bad, still the things I had, I was grateful for. I could be ambitious. I could have set targets for other things that I want to achieve, but in the moment I'm in, I was always grateful. And I can understand how this works for you because a lot of things that are detrimental to basically how we live life, the quality of the life we live is comparison. And we talked about comparison a lot last week. If you start comparing, if you start having, it's not greed, it's not greed. I mean, there's greed, which is really bad, but there's that desire to have more. There's that desire to have what others have. There's that desire, not having a stance for yourself. My goodness, you're going to live a life that is hectic. And I've actually had people in my life who didn't have a stance of their own. And I've actually seen mirroring. And what that does for me is, is, is a turn off. If, if I come into your life and you start to mirror my personality because you don't have one of your own, you start to mirror the things I do because you don't have one of your own. I'm just like, 
So how many lives do you live in your lifetime if every time you meet someone and then you start to mirror what they're doing? So this is such a strong trait to have. It is such a beautiful trait to have. You will live such a fulfilled life and it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll have all the wealth there is in this world. It just means that 90% of the time you'll be really confident in whatever you already have. <sighs> I loved this. I really, really, really loved this. Um, I, I felt like it was so wholesome. And sometimes it happens to people. Like this is something that just happens to someone. It's not like you had control over the life you lived as a younger person. It's not like you had control over the traits you picked up as a younger person. These are things that maybe you just caught on from somewhere, but then they've worked out for you over time. They've worked out for you in the real life, which is a good thing. Some people experience just natural gifts. Some people have to work for them. Some people have to acquire. It's the way life is. And you just appreciate that which you get. And as you continue to learn, the bad ones you unlearn, the good ones you learn or relearn how to do some things if you need to tweak a few things here and there. It is just life. But I love this for you. Now we are moving into another long one. Hey, yo, it's long. It's long, but I feel this is the reason why this podcast exists. Okay, so I have to read it out because we're finishing season three. We're being very sentimental. You'll understand why these two last, these last two emails were very, very important to what this episode was about. So this one says, hi, Olive, how you doing? <laughs> I know I don't have to tell you to use Joy's voice because you will either way. <laughs> <laughs> you know me too well. Uh, his story, I hope people will not put two and two together, but here goes. I don't know if people are this... You think people actually sit down and piece up this information and be like, oh, this sounds like nanny. But anyway, we'll go into it. Um, a little backstory of how I developed a negative counter trait. So I have had a very hard life growing up, especially after my single mom passed away when I was 12. It's not what it's not that I don't want. It's, it's not that I don't know my dad. We have met and that is just a story for another day. So I kept going to relative after relative where I struggled so hard to fit with their norms. Do when you go to Rome, you're supposed to do what the Romans do. I could only be a good girl for a short while before my adolescent self came to play. And we all know how rebellious adolescents can get. Well, turns out there wasn't so much patience in my rich auntie's cup. I got into trouble in high school. I was at a very prestigious high school in the Rift Valley, by the way, top private class. Rift Valley, huh? That sounds like home to me. I might know it. Though I swear I was framed, but they weren't willing to listen. Her being my sole provider, she decided she will not tolerate a kid that's not hers giving her headaches and shipped me off to our village to be cared for by her siblings. By then, word had already gotten around so you can imagine the amount of kuvumilia they were doing with me. Anyway, at the back of my head, I knew I needed to be a good girl so I did everything I could to try and be one. How it came to play. Then comes all the people pleasing and the ass leaking. At the time, I am 15 and I, it didn't work, and it didn't work though. By the time I was done with my form 4, 16 at the time, 17 found me living with other relatives. At this point, I aced my KCSE and was called to do finance at an awesome uni in Nairobi, but I couldn't gather funds myself and the relatives I stayed with really struggled to put food on their table. At 16, you are not even eligible for help. The people pleasing thing is something I carried with me up until recently when I got a friend who really saw me for me and helped me identify areas of myself that uh, reflect that reflected self-loathing, the insecurities that I tended to project in so many ways, like getting defensive, getting over emotional, stressing about small stuff, being extremely sensitive. I couldn't even take a joke. Juleo, your statement, ni joke. Kesho naichukulia personally. 
I was also too clingy whenever I got into relationships and because I guess I was feeling the need to be loved because at the back of my head, najua kila mtu hunivumilia, I felt like I have to work extra twice as hard to get you to love me. Ningetumia wanaume huku pesa aki olive. Ata hiyo ni ya kununua, ati hiyo ni ya kununua drink. Hata mimi mwenyewe huwa sinyui. That sh- that just shows how I could lower my guard and my standards to accommodate any man that showed even in tiny bits ata kama ni maneno tu that they loved me. Hectic. How I overcame the negative trait and developed the positive one. With gradual growth, I had I have stopped people pleasing and I am more assertive in my decisions and more intentional with my thoughts. And OMG, isn't this fulfilling? Isn't this so relaxing? And let me tell you, I have lost friends and some at least wamebaki to kuwa acquaintances because these days I tell you like it is. I will call you out, ama nikiona, see worth it, I just detach. Tutakutana if we really need to. They have even called me rude. Maybe it's because I don't worship the ground in which they stand. And these days my decisions are influenced by myself and no one else. That I know of my feelings are valid. That I know my feelings are valid. Lakini, to be honest, nilipoteza filter nilikuwa nayo kwa mdomo. Maybe inafa ni irudishe ndio, nisikue rude. But I will still detach. <laughs> Mara nyingine I can express in words how grateful. Mara nyingine Oh, mara nyingine aki guy reading Kiswahili and English sometimes. Mara nyingine I can't express in words how grateful I am for bringing us this platform. I didn't know I had stories. Yours truly a loyal fan. Ah! So I love this. I love that you've gone through the entire journey and of course we've read some of your stories even here before. You've literally gone through the entire journey and I love a healing story. I love a story of success. I love a story of being in a better place. (coughs) But you'll have to be careful with that last bit. Sometimes when we get into a a space where we are healing or we are getting better, we move from one extreme to another. So you might find yourself having coming from people pleasing, chronic people pleasing, to just being extremely, I would say vile. Because when people tell you, people have always said, and this is something I also had to learn because I'm someone who speaks the truth. I don't know how to lie. But I've always, I started learning recently that the truth doesn't have to be brutal. I can find a way of delivering something to you that is not necessarily hurtful. So I have to see how I package whatever I say to you. And you say, you're learning. We've gotten to this stage and we are happy for that. As we continue, we learn, we relearn, we get to know better. I love it. And it shows how, you see how you had years. From the time you were 12, your mother died and you had to move from family to family. And from the time you are 12, your mind has been conditioned to think that you're not deserving of love and attention. And so you've worked for it your whole life. To get to a point where you intentionally decide to work towards being that person for yourself, finding fulfillment within self. It's lovely. I I love it. I love it. And for people even listening right now, you could listen to the first first episode of the first season of this podcast and listen to me right now. And you can literally tell the growth. There's nothing as beautiful as growth. There's nothing as beautiful as self-awareness and self-love. There's nothing as beautiful as being aware of what it is you're feeling, what it is you want, being assertive in the things that you want and not being able to be uh, blown, to be swayed by the wind is beautiful. Loyal fun is beautiful, is beautiful. And I love that I created a platform that has helped you share, a platform that triggered a part of you that realized, oh, wait, I thought my life was very mellow. Apparently, my life is not. (laughs) So I love this for you. And thank you for sending in mail on our last episode of season three. This was so wholesome and it is so apt, like it's so beautiful. And I loved it for this particular episode. Ah, Now on to our last mail that is long. Guys, are you ready? It's long. But I feel it basically encompassed the energy of this episode and how I wanted to close it. So here we go. Dear Olive, 
I love your podcast. I am in love with your podcast. Weirdly, it has made me learn more about myself. I love to hear it. You can call me Orange to rhyme with your name. Ah! <laughs> I've never noticed my name rhymes with Orange. Orange. Olive. I love it. Love it. I have been wanting to respond to your prompts on Thursdays, but this corporate world pamoja na sirikali ya nabi huni maliza yani. So I hope you won't mind if I respond to topics that you had talked about previously, but I always tune in on Mondays. Keep doing what you are doing. You have no idea how much it means to some of us. This might be a long email, so buckle up. First of all, I just want to send out love to you because you I definitely am because you are. When I started this podcast, literally there was like two people listening. And it is for those two people that I had an episode come out every day. And I love the loyalty. I love, sometimes I cannot, sometimes I don't have the strength or the energy. But I swear to you, it is these things that that fuel me. I swear to you, I have days when life is not lifing for me. But I feel like I, I owe a family something. I owe a family a day to share. I owe a family a day to hear that there's someone else out there. I owe a family, my family, by the way, I'm talking about you guys, my family. It's not just someone outside. I owe this family this much, like coming in and having, sharing in this story. So ah, I have so much love for you and I love that it's reciprocated. So let's get into it. Right from when you spoke about the toxic things that our parents have imposed on us, my mother and I have forever had a very shaky relationship. I feel like we are very different people and I have really struggled to just make her feel I am enough. I am the only girl in my home and I feel like she is such a sweet mother to the boys but too harsh on me. You don't feel like it. It's very common for mothers to be kinder to their sons and be very vile to their daughters. Whenever people be hosting or talking about being best friends with their mother, I cannot relate at all. Our relationship only works better when we are away from each other. I recently came to realize a lot of things that I have done in my life because of her counsel are turning sour and I just decided to stop listening to everything she says like that is the only way. You know, mama knows best and other stories. Fortunately, or unfortunately, I got pregnant early, immediately after Form 4. It's frowned upon. I get that. And anybody's parents would be angry at their daughter who gets knocked up after that. But the words from my mother still pierce me to date. Kama kawaida, baby daddy aliruka. This baby daddy who came to our home and talked shit to me right in front of my parents and family... After that altercation, my daddy told me my daddy told me to leave him alone and he supported me through it. But my mother kept insisting that I keep trying to reach out to him. Why on earth would you encourage your daughter to keep following this man who can disrespect her in front of her parents? I did try to reach out uh, because she asked me to in vain and I ended up feeling very bad about begging this man to be present in his child's life. That is one. Secondly, and most importantly, she told me that no man will ever value me or take me in or accept me because I have a child. That thing stuck in my head and I have always been settling for less. I ended up with this guy who did the bare minimum for me, but I loved him to death in, in, and in my head, I knew that this was the best I could get considering my child's situation. At least he accepted me. Oh, that is so sad. Do you understand me when I say bare minimum? Barely even that minimum. I have paid for dates, vacations, bills, miscellaneous activities, you name it, just so I could keep this guy because I did not want to lose somebody who's accepted me and loves me. According to my mother's counsel, I considered myself lucky to even get this bare minimum. Years passed by and this year I made the stupid decision of moving in with him. Hatuku kata four months before my eyes just opened up. Time is moving and the kid is growing so definitely mahitaji ya taongezeka. I made, I made the mistake of mentioning 
to this my man that I am thinking of summoning the baby daddy for child support because why not? Why shouldn't my child have a good life if he can? Why should I suffer alone? Things are fucking tough. He really overreacted. Mara, he did not sign up for that. Mara, he cannot be with me if I am communicating with that man, Sijui Nini. Mind you, this guy, mwenye anakatani itishe child support, kuingine has never done shit for my child. We have been together for about four years and he has always known I have a kid. Hata peremende. I begged this man not to leave me. I'm not proud of that, but I did. He was so mad at me, and for what? Caring about my own child that he has never even lifted a finger for. That is when I started planning my exit and ultimately unlearning the things that my mama thought were best for me. He never showed me that he would make a worthy father and he was always insisting on getting a child and I'm not about to give birth to another shitty I'm not about to give birth I'm not about to give another child another shitty father. He went as far as saying that he does not see the point of staying with me and my child if I don't give him a child and his siblings would deem or see him stupid for settling down with a single mother. After I gave him the option of leaving me if this kid issue would be would bring problems in future, I did back in 2021. This is the same man who keeps hassling me for everything. If I begin to, to go into details, this email will never end. Long story short, I decided to move out and I have never felt better. It might be a bit hard to adjust, but I do not regret that decision. We cannot be out here doing things we do not want just because we want to feel accepted by someone's, by some people's son. I love it. My character trait that I feel has worked out for me is being able to live a double life. Separating who I really am from those it would hurt to know the real me, e.g. my parents or relatives. I don't know if that's a character trait really, but it works for me. It has worked for me for years. I just cannot be the same person around everyone. My bolt border is here. You'll hear from me again soon. Love, Orange. Oh, sweet orange, you summarized this entire season so beautifully because there's literally aspects of everything we've been talking about for 24 episodes in this one story. And I love that you took back your power. And if there's one thing that I know I have always felt sensitive talking about is when addressing single moms, because I'm not a mother myself. I'm not in those situations of just a toxic love. But I know one thing that in a lot of families, even for our parents, as much as they don't want to admit it, in a lot of families, having a husband or having a boyfriend or having a partner, a lot of times for single mothers, is just extra baggage. Once you look, once you, you take out the insecurity of, I don't want to be by myself, you will realize that if you're paying for the dates, you're paying for the vacations, you're paying for the house, you're, pay you're taking care of your child alone. Why do you have this man? He's literally an extra mouth to feed. He's literally an extra laundry basket to wash. He's literally an extra space in the room that you have to reserve for him and less space for your child. So at the end of the day, I've seen divorcee women just saying, um... It was, they dropped a man and their life became a hundred times lighter because you were still doing all these things, even with them there. So if you just let go of them, you're still doing all these things. But now without the extra baggage, without the extra noise in your head, without the extra uh, manipulative voice or narcissistic voice that tries to bring you down. And also something else that you've addressed is the counsel that we get from our parents. Our parents can be toxic. If I listened to some of the things that my parents have told me to negotiate for, I don't think I'd be living the quality of life that I have afforded myself right now. I had to just step out and be whatever they call you. They'll call you the rebel, of course. They'll call you names. But at the end of the day, you have to stand the things that you believe. Because I don't believe... Also, you have a son. For single moms, you have to, you have to remember... When you have a child, 
Your life does not belong to you. You have to be a happier person for this child, for you not to pass down these toxic traits that we are, we are all complaining about because you hold on to these relationships. And then finally, these things your child is experiencing, they'll also have toxic traits they have to deal with. So you're just passing on therapy and therapy and therapy on to other generations. So once you've realized this, I love that you came out of it. I love that your eyes opened. I said, I love a beautiful success story for healing. I love when I see, I hear people say healing. It is not a destination. It is definitely a journey and it takes time. It takes intention. It takes energy because healing is not linear. Healing is not as simple as we make it seem. There are days you will spiral. There are days you will cry. There are days it will hurt. There are days you will physically feel yourself feeling drained. Healing is not easy, but we are grateful all the same. And uh, that brings us, that has basically summarized this episode and it brings us to the last of everything. So for me, things that have worked out, a character trait that I have that has worked out for me and I think has been very um, instrumental even to this podcast has been being calm because I got into the content space and I have, I have experienced a lot. I have experienced just there's there's points where you you experience some negativity and just being calm and trying to figure out where 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 can i find yes let's stay calm and find figure this out first we cannot be combative if we don't know what we are dealing with and the second thing that has worked out for me in my life generally is also being logical while still being quite nurturing and i think that's what's created the very beautiful space that we have here on the podcast where I will give you very logical advice. I will tell you, you need to leave that man. You will need to leave that woman. Do not allow violence into your life. I'm very logical by the advice that I give you, but I'm still very nurturing. If you come to me, you won't feel judged. If you come to me, you will feel warm. You will feel like you you found a home. You feel, you'll feel safe. So I feel like a lot of times when people say, because I got the nurturing from my mom, okay, even my dad, but my dad is very logical. So I feel like those two things came together and I took up both. My dad is very logical. He's just like calculative. He, of, okay, this has happened. How can we find a solution? How do we move forward? And my mom is the kind who still likes to to swim in it a little and just feel, oh my goodness, I'm feeling bad about it. Oh, this one has hurt me. So I think I've gotten to the point where I'm just like, I'm, I'm nurturing, but... When it comes to logic, we also have to say it. And over time, I keep saying that I'm so grateful that I got into content when I did at the age of probably 29, 28, 20. Right now I'm turning 31. So around 28, 29. Yeah, that's when I got into like actual content. And because I was already in a, on a healing journey and also because I was older and knew better, so I knew how to react. I knew how to handle specific things. So for me... Being here, I feel like I've come in with like better counsel than I would have in my 20s. So as much as I felt like I delayed to get here where I'm producing consistent content, I feel like, I, I, I don't know, the, the, the universe had aligned it that way so that I'd come here and create this space while being in a better space, even mentally for myself, even being happy. And another character I have is being happy. I will always be happy because let me go back to now this story. When um, I was very suicidal at some point and when I survived two suicidal attempts, which were just ODing, when I survived two suicidal attempts, I think after that, I was very intentional about living life on my terms. And I said, I'm not going to live a life where I feel like a shell of myself, where I operate on autopilot, where I'm just a zombie. I go to work, pay rent, drink, whatever remains. Go to work, pay rent, drink, whatever remains. So I told myself I'm going to live life being a bit more intentional. I'm going to live life on my terms. And my terms were very simple, peaceful and happy. That's all peaceful and ha it does not matter what happens come shine come high waters peaceful and happy and i've tried my best to do that and just to give you a little backstory into where this podcast began this podcast probably began three years ago it could be three years ago yeah when i finally put out this content that i have not deleted 
but the YouTube channel actually existed since 2014. And who is imposter syndrome? I used to upload videos and delete, upload and delete. I remember even up to 2019, there's content that stayed up for two weeks and I still came back and deleted it because I just didn't feel like it was good enough. I didn't feel like I sounded good. I didn't feel like I had the quality that I would see other vloggers have. I was just too much. And when I finally got to doing in on all in all honesty podcast, it started out as a journal actually on YouTube because it wasn't even on streaming sites. It was just on YouTube where I just sit with a microphone. <laughs> well, not my, a microphone, my phone, my previous phone. I'd sit with my phone like this at 2 a.m. or 2 3 a.m. when it's very quiet and just record the episodes. And to me, it started as a journal where I thought, I thought to myself, I'm going to put out my stories out there because I used to journal through writing. But then over time, I got like writing gigs and writing did not, writing stopped being such an intimate art for me. So I had to move it somewhere. So at the time, I found myself really liking to talk. So I'll just talk to myself. And that's how this podcast was born in season one, episode one, where I just talked about things that would come to my mind. I was just like, ah, this have, I've thought about this this week. Let me talk about it, what my thoughts are. And I just put them out. And as I did that, people started to listen. So by the time I got to season two, I realized, wait, wait a minute, there are people listening and now season two was geared by something different. Season two for me was like, wait a minute. I, I started this podcast just to speak because I had no one else to share with because it felt like my life existed singularly. It felt like no one else is experiencing the experiences I have. No one else is living life like me. I'm living a very unconventional life. Everyone I talk to, if I talk to my parents, if I talk to my siblings, if I talk to my friends, every time I talked to someone and mentioned something very personal to me, I would be looked at as if I'm delusional, as if I'm making, as if I'm living in my head. And I think for season two, I remember telling myself, if I exist, if someone with the same characters as me exists, if I personally have gone through the things I have gone through in life, there surely, surely must be someone else in life uh, somewhere in this world there must be someone else in life who's experiencing the same things I'm experiencing. So when we got to season two, season two, I was just like, I'm going to put out things that I have experienced and whoever finds it, they find it. I'm not marketing. Season two was not even on socials, I think. But at the time is when I started being now like more intentional. I put it on streaming sites. I was like, okay, now we have a podcast, guys. If anyone wants to listen, you can come and listen. And so as season two grew, towards the end of season two, as it got consistent, I realized that there are people who actually have lived my life. There are people who relate and resonate with my experiences. And so as season two ended, I realized that this podcast is still very much rooted in my honest um, life experiences. And so I thought to myself, okay, this life experiences, there's only so much I can go through. Let me hear other versions of these life experiences. So that's how we got to season three, where I started to crowdfund for other people's stories. And this was as simple as I'm going to, I'm going to go with an experience that I know of, that I have experienced, and I want to hear your version. So that's how we ended up with prompts on Thursdays how we ended up with stories being shared here, how we got mail, how we got direct messages, how we got, like, that is how we ended up here because I was putting out prompts for things that I have experienced in my life and now wanted to hear what other people had experienced. And it's been a beautiful, beautiful journey. As much as you feel like I have created a platform that has given you a home and where you feel safe, you have no idea how your stories and your sharing and everything that you have done has really affirmed me as a human, has affirmed me and my experiences growing up, has affirmed every part of me. I literally, I literally navigate the world more confident right now because I know I'm not alone and it's, it's a beautiful thing for me. As much as this podcast has done something for you, it has done so much for me. And that is why I felt like closing this season was... Ah, was was a bit much. It's a bit much because it literally is a labor of love. As I went on with it, I didn't want to commercialize it. Yes, I thought of ways in which I could make money, just like a passive money, passive income from the podcast, because I know once 
like this podcast starts to be influenced by someone probably who's financing um or someone who's giving financial support then probably the the intention or rather the the signature or rather what the podcast entails will start taking a turn depending on where they want it to go right so i've always been very careful about not commercializing it i can find my first way was just to make like money from small businesses have ads here and there and just not to have something that will majorly influence where the direction of the podcast is going because I am genuinely creating a platform where people can share, where people are sharing real life stories. They're being vulnerable and I wanted it to be a safe space. And while I wanted this podcast to be a safe space, I was very careful not to make it a pity party because I do not want that as well. I want this place to be a place where you come and share and then go about your life and thrive, not come here and cry and we trauma bond and see doing mm -mm. It's okay. You've gone through an experience. You want to talk about it. I've prompted you to talk about it. You felt triggered. Come talk to us about it. Let us share. Let us all agree. Let us all laugh about our experiences and then go back to real life and hustle again. I don't want it to be a pity party. I just want it to be a safe place, a safe place where we share and we have a good time. So season four, there's only so many things I can go through. There has been a multiple, there has been multiple suggestions that have been made for topics to cover for season four. So that is what will be happening in season four. But basically, I am so grateful. I cannot even tell you. <laughs> I don't know what to tell. I cannot even tell you. I, I, I lack words to say just thank you. The two words, thank you. I'm, I'm looking for everything I can get in me to just say thank you. And uh, as basically you now know the mini story of this podcast, we're going to take a break. Um, I'm looking at four to six weeks, but I am not sure because there's a lot of logistics I have to plan. I'm looking at four to six weeks. And so I'm looking at around my birthday. Then we can resume, which is November, the 20th of November. Um, if we can't re resume by then, I'll keep you updated. But as I have said, the channels are still very much active. I will still put out, um, not prompts per se, but I will put out teasers and reminders of previous episodes if you not listen to them, um, just to refresh our memory. And when we come back, we'll come back with season four. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the love. Thank you for everything. Like, I cannot... Yo, if I continue speaking, like this episode could go for three hours over just me saying thank you, finding words to say thank you. I am so grateful. My heart is full. My heart is busting out in glitter and rainbows. And I have truly met humans who are genuine at heart. They are kind at heart. They have found a place where they have felt safe. And I am honored to have been the person to have created that space. And I am honored to have shared in your stories, to have been trusted with your stories, to have had someone have so much loyalty to come in every single Monday and listen to an episode, sometimes two episodes, literally two hours long. <sighs> Until season four, this has been the season finale um, episode of season three. My fabulous name is Oliver Rao. And never forget that this podcast remains the In All Honesty podcast and true to its fashion, we remain honest, at least we live our honest lives. And yeah, until next episode. Bye. Mm -hmm.